Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel, That Model Railway Guy, and welcome to another layout update from the Modular Model Railway. A few months back I made a video where I made a tunnel for the layout, and I made quite a lot of progress with that actually. I managed to get the entire main structure of the tunnel complete, but I never got round to doing any scenery. Well, today all that changes. I'm going to use a mixture of tried and tested techniques that I've used before and also some new stuff to finally complete the scenery on this module. And my hope is that by the end of this video, this module will be complete. It'll be another one ticked off the list. So yeah, I'm excited. I hope you're excited too. Let's get straight to it, shall we? So here's the tunnel module and let's just quickly recap what I've done to get to this stage so far. Firstly, you can see the track has all been weathered and then ballasted. I also did a lot of work on painting up the tunnel mouth and making an interior for it too. The basic landform was built up over the track with polystyrene supports and chicken wire, and this was then covered in a layer of paper mache followed by plaster bandage. The rest of the module is still just bare baseboard though, and I really want to add in a bit more landscape here to blend into where the land starts to rise. And that's where I'll start today, so without further ado, let's get to it. As this is a relatively small area to fill, I'm just going to use blocks of polystyrene instead of chicken wire this time. You can see I've already cut this larger block to a rough shape, and I'm just gluing it down into position. As the land falls down towards the track, you may find you need a bit of extra glue just to hold the thinner parts down. And then I repeated this same process on the other side of the module, so that the track is in a little bit of a cutting here. Generally you can see I start with larger blocks first, and then I try to fill in any gaps I have with smaller bits afterwards. You can see this in action a bit more here. Now that I've got the main larger blocks in place, it's much easier to use smaller sections to build things up around it. And don't forget, this is just a very rough structure at the moment to give a general idea of how the land rises and falls. All this will be covered fairly soon, which will even out those gaps and ridges. And here is the state of the module after all the polystyrene has been fixed into position. You can see up by the tunnel I've used lots of little pieces to really blend it into the existing landscape. And yes, it does look pretty dodgy at the moment, but hopefully when this is covered in plaster bandage, it'll all look a lot better. Speaking of plaster bandage, let's get on with that now. If you've watched any of my previous videos, you'll have seen me do this before, and by now you'll know I have absolutely no strategy on how I put this on. I'm sure there is a way to do this more efficiently, but for me, I kind of just figure it out as I go along. For the most part though, as I get more into it, I do start to build it up in strips or a bit of a grid. Now around the tunnel mouth I did have to be more careful here, as I wanted to get the bandage in as close as I could, but without getting plaster all over the tunnel itself. And then at the end of the baseboard here, you can really see how the bandage smooths out some of those gaps and ridges. So now that the plaster bandage is dry, you can see this is what the landscape looks like. I'm really pleased with this, especially the way it merges into the existing landscape over the tunnel. Looking at it, you wouldn't think these two sections were done months apart, which is what I was slightly worried about. Now after this, I did have to put the fascias on the side of the modules. I've already done an entire video on this, which you can actually see at the top right of your screen now, so that's why I didn't cover it again here, as the process is exactly the same. The only difference is that, as these modules are curved, it was a bit more tricky to bend the wood into position. As you can see, there are little gaps at the edge though where the plaster bandage ends and the fascia starts. What I like to do here is just use another strip of plaster bandage to cover the gap. I drape it over the fascia and the existing landscape, and when it dries it'll not only fill the gap, but because it's so solid it'll hold the top of the fascia in place as well. Thank you. 
Now onto the top of the tunnel, and I've decided I want some trees and the start of a wooded area here. I actually splashed out a little and got a couple of these pre-made trees from Woodland Scenics. I saw these in a model shop a while back and I thought they actually looked quite good, so I decided to get them. They're a bit taller than the usual armatures I use, which will give the layout a nice bit of variety, and they're also painted to look like silver birch trees too. And this is the rough idea I have for the wooded area. You can see I've got the smaller trees at the front and they gradually get larger as they go back. Eventually when I get a back scene on here, I'd like it to have a continuation of the trees too, so it looks like this is just the start of a more substantial wood or forest. Now all these trees use the Woodland Scenics armatures with the plastic bases, and if you saw my recent video on making removable trees for the layout, well then this is another technique you'll probably recognise. To quickly summarise though, I'm embedding the tree bases into the ground by building up a layer of modelling compound around them. This means that when the trees are done, I can slot them into place and then remove them when the module is put away for storage. This is actually the highest point on the entire layout, and the trees will add to that height even more, so being able to remove them will really be useful. So with all the bases now embedded into the landscape, you can see just how many trees I'm planning to have in this area. And now it's time to paint all of the white plaster bandage a nice muddy brown colour. As I've said in the past, I do this because the brown doesn't shine through as much as the white would. And of course, if there are any thin patches of scenery when all this is done, it'll look just like a layer of mud or dirt underneath. And of course, don't forget we need to paint over the top of the tunnel as well. Now down by the track, I really want to get close up to the edge of the ballast. I used to be really worried about not getting paint on the ballast itself here, but actually I've realised it doesn't matter all that much as it can blend the two together. I still don't try and go too crazy with it though. Next up, I put down a layer of PVA over the brown, and this is because I want to add some dirt texture to either side of the running line. As I've said many times before, this is dirt I get from the garden, which I sieve into a container to get it as fine as possible, and I'm sure the neighbours think I'm absolutely insane. Usually this works better in the summer when the soil is all dried out and it's more like a powder, but it's still okay as a base layer here. In addition to doing the areas by the track, I'm also going to do a section up by the trees. Thinking about it, grass would be a lot thinner up here in the wood as there's less light getting to the ground, so I figured if I want the grass to be more patchy, I can have a bit of soil up here as well just to add to the texture. For the trees on the very edge of the wood or just outside it, I do a little area around the tree, which is generally what I've done on the rest of the layout. So now I want to move on to something I'm really excited about. Dry stone walls. Okay, stay with me here. For ages, I've wanted to add dry stone walls to the layout, but I've never been happy with either my own scratch building attempts or with the products on the market, until now. This is arch laser cut flexible walling, and it might be one of the best model railway items I've ever come across. It is quite expensive for the amount you get, but in my case I do think it's worth it. The main advantage is that this is made from foam, which means you can easily bend it around corners and over undulating surfaces. All I do is add a line of superglue along the bottom, and then it's ready to be stuck down to the layout. 
I just match it up to the end of the previous section, and then because it's so flexible, I can bend it however I want. You can see here, the joint between the two sections really isn't that noticeable either, considering how close the camera is. But if I really wanted to, I could just add a bush or something here to disguise that even more. And then because it's so flexible, you don't have to worry about it getting damaged by accident either, because it just springs back into position. Again, as the land rises, it has no problem following the contours here, and this makes it look much more like it's been built by human hands, rather than the usual pre-made straight rigid sections that are made out of resin. When I got to the end of the module, I did just have a little bit hanging over the edge, but this was no problem as I was able to just cut it off with a pair of scissors. And with that, the wall is complete. I actually think the colour is fine as it is, so I'm going to leave it like this, though I suppose I could add some variation to it later if I wanted to. Now this pack cost me £16, and was basically enough to do the whole outer edge of the module. The only excess I had was that little bit I cut off the end. As I said before, you don't get a huge amount considering the cost, but there are some model railway items I'm willing to spend a bit extra on to get the look I'm after, and this is definitely one of them. So yeah, you could expect to see a lot more of this on the layout in the future. So now it's time to add the static grass, and the first step of this is to put down a layer of PVA. Again, I've done lots of videos where I've gone through my static grass technique, so this will be pretty familiar for those of you who have already seen that video. I use a larger brush for covering the majority of the board, and then a smaller brush for getting right in up close to the wall without getting glue on it. And then it's time to add a base layer of 2mm static grass. Generally, I do a small area at a time and leave a little bit of the glue uncovered, so it's easier to blend in the glue for the next section. Around the trees, you'll notice I'm not covering the areas with soil on them. When I sprinkle the grass over this section though, you'll see that it does cover it, but because it's not got any glue to stick to, it'll just brush off once the rest of this is dry. But aside from that, it's just a case of working my way round the module until the surface is fully covered in grass. And that includes doing the area behind the wall too. It may not be seen all that often, but given how often I have cameras on the layout, I can't really afford to leave it. Now, up by the trees, I said I didn't want to have too much of a grass covering, so I haven't put down a base layer up here. Instead, I've put down some weak PVA in small patches, and this will just get a single covering of slightly longer 4mm grass. Hopefully this will give it a thinner look so that the thicker grass out in the open gradually transitions into this, and then into the dirt layer. For the rest of the module, I use some layering spray before adding more 4mm grass fibres, which just makes the base layer look more wild and less like a recently mowed lawn. When it comes to the other side, I'm just using a bit of paper to shield the wall from the spray glue, as I don't want any fibres to randomly stick to it. After the spray is down though, it's just a case of using the static grass applicator in the usual way. And then afterwards, I simply go along the wall and brush away any loose fibres.
Moving on to the next layer, now I just do patches of different colours to bring a bit of variation into the grass. And you can also see down by the track I've added in some smaller tufts that just break the dirt layer up a bit there. This is all 6mm fibres now, and in this case I'm using a slightly darker colour. I also use 6mm dead grass, and again that's in small isolated patches like this. I also used quite a lot of this up by the wood area too, and again this just helps bring everything together. And while we're speaking about the wooded area, it's about time we got some trees in place. You can see now that this really transforms the look of the module, and the trees do build up the height quite nicely as well. Obviously though, this area needs a lot more work to bring it up to a really high standard, as does the whole module really, as you can see now. But I have made a lot of progress here, and I'm really happy with how this is looking. Again, it's another module that's gone from being mostly bare baseboard to having pretty much most of the scenery completed. So as we come to the end of another video, I am really pleased with how all this has turned out. Especially the dry stone wall along the back here. Uh, yeah, every time I look at that, I really love the way it looks. And the way that the land rises up over the tunnel as well, I think that looks really natural. So yeah, really pleased with how that's turned out. Um, as I did say a minute ago though, there is still a long way to go with this module. And I think generally what I'm going to try and do is complete all of the modules on the layout to this sort of standard. And then I'll go back and do the detailing stuff later on. Um, but as far as this module goes, uh, you can see there is a couple of trees that are, are a little bit yellow. Uh, I need to redo those. They were from a sort of a failed experiment, so they'll get replaced at some point in the future. Um, but just adding things like, you know, undergrowth and bushes and weeds just to kind of flesh out the layout a bit more. And I have actually experimented with that a little bit already. I'll put in a close up here you can see at the very back up by the wall I've added in some bushes using clump foliage. Considering I just sort of stuck those on the layout to see how they look I think they look all right actually so you can expect to see more of those popping up in the future probably. Speaking of future videos if you would like to see some of those then make sure you subscribe and hit the bell icon too but for now thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!